These are the men behind the golf balls. Behind the golf balls. Behind the golf. Golf, the richest sport played by man in the entire world. Australian singer-songwriter John Russell has come up with a world-first concept, something we believe millions of golf fans all over the world would cherish among their CD or record collection. John has composed two songs, both pertaining to golf and at the same time paying respect to the entire golf fraternity. The players, the sponsors, the golf course designers, golf club presidents, the green keepers, in fact, each and everyone involved in some way or another in helping to make golf the most exciting and richest sport in the entire world. Allow me to introduce the man himself to explain how it all came about. Hello there. Thanks for watching this presentation. My name is John Russell and for most of my life I've been a performer, singer, songwriter. I've always taken a pride in the fact that in writing my songs I've always liked to take uh, time in writing songs about people that have achieved something great in life. People such as Charles Kingsford Smith. I wrote a song about Charles Kingsford Smith some time ago and he's playing the Southern Cross. However, um, I've always also been a keen follower of golf as a spectator only. And a few years ago I had a vivid dream and it was such a vivid dream, it was almost so real. When I awoke I thought, I just felt that it was compelling me to do something, to write a song about my dream. The dream was about golf, as a matter of fact, and uh, it was actually just a few weeks prior to the untimely death of um, Payne Stewart, who was one of my very favourite golf golfers of the 90s. I got to thinking about this for some time and eventually I thought, well, nobody's ever written so a song about golf in, in as much as paying tribute on a serious uh, point of view to the entire golf fraternity. There had been songs written, golf, comedy songs written about golf, but nothing written on a serious note. I wanted to write something and pay tribute to the whole uh, fraternity in golf, not only the players, but to the golf keepers, the golf course designers, the sponsors, the backers, even the fans that follow golf. In fact, the whole golf fraternity, because it's one of the most, uh, well, it's probably the most uh, richest sport in the entire world played by man. I thought about this for some time, did a bit of research, all the time my mind kept saying I should write these two songs as soon as possible. So I eventually wrote my first song which I called A Tribute to Golf. And in that song, as I said, I paid tribute to all these other people, not only to the golf players and not only the men, but to the women as well. Having done that first song, I wanted to um, do another one and I wanted to actually put that dream I had down on paper too. So I thought about that for some time and uh, I eventually wrote that dream down as best I could recollect it and I called that particular song uh, a, tribute, uh, a golfer's dream and in that uh, last song I made uh, mention of more than 20 of the top golf players from around the world. Having the two songs written I was quite happy but then I wanted to record them for the whole world to perhaps uh, to hear so I thought well I should uh, record these two songs in the um, world capital of country music which is in Nashville. So I flew to Nashville and put the two songs in with my producer friend over there John Riggs and um, Having uh, finished the recording session, I, got, I then got in my car and I drove to Kentucky to an old PGA player that I knew who um, these days runs a um, indoor golf school. And uh, I wanted he, this man to be, a, um, to be the first to actually hear these two songs because I, I really um, would respect his opinion. He listened to the two songs and he said, John, he said, those two songs just gave me goose pebbles. He said, that's just what the PGA are looking for right now. So that gave me a lot of, a lot of uh, confidence and I uh, felt that I wasn't wasting my time. Uh, I've got to a stage now where I've got the two songs down uh, and uh, I'm very happy with them. I've got a world first. I don't believe that anybody in the world has written two songs pertaining to golf in this nature uh, anywhere. Um, and when you imagine the amount of golf fans around the world, it's mind-boggling. 
Uh, I of, always thought that the, the right marketing person could uh, even, we could even market it on the uh, Golf TV channel in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I mean, it's mind boggling when you consider the uh, possibilities of, this, of these two songs, this, this CD. Now I got to a stage where I need someone with the capital and the um, contacts in the industry to come in with me on a 50-50 basis. Um, and uh, I'm pretty thrilled about the whole idea. I'd like, I'd like to say thank you again for watching this presentation and the full details about the two songs and if you'd like to listen to the two songs uh, will be uh, included on this presentation. Thank you. There was Craig Stadler, Bob Tway, Tom Lehman, David Frost, Nick Faldo, Lee Trevino, Payne Stewart, Fuzzy Zuella, Fred Couples, Greg Norman, VJ Singh, Steve Elkington, Nick Price, Seb Ballesteris, Ian Wisdom, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas, Bernard Langer, Colin Montgomery, David Love III, Gary Player, Phil Nicholson, Sayo and Jumbo Ozaki. Just as I was marvelling at the greatness of it all, found that I was wide awake, that I can still recall. All the greats kept coming, I'm so proud to say The magic of my dream remains until my dying day We've gathered here today, my friends, with golfers all well known Their names will be remembered long after they have gone All these greats have earned a place in the Golfers Hall of Fame and here today we're proud to say we've got many classic names. Here today we're proud to say we've got many classic names.